When I was 22 years old, I was stuck in a cycle of self-doubt and just wondering if I would ever be able to do anything significant with my life. And I had dropped out of college. I was barely making ends meet. And I just felt so lost and stuck. By 23, I had finally gotten on the train. Everybody told me was going to take me to victory. I had gotten a corporate job. I was the youngest person there. I was making more money than I thought that I ever would be by that age. And I had the PTO and all the things that everybody told me were going to be satisfying. And I figured out very quickly that it wasn't. And I'm in this place where you probably are right now, where I, I was making enough money. I had a corporate job, but I realized this is not what I want. I cannot give to the level that I want to. And I, I don't have freedom. I can't travel when I want to or be be able to even take care of my family the way that I want to and to be able to do things on my own time. So by 24, I did something that no one could have expected. And by the grace of God, by the time I turned 25, I was a millionaire. And so what in the heck happened from 24 to 25? What were the lessons that I learned that year that shifted everything for me and enabled me to accomplish something that most people never accomplish in their lives? not to mention my 25. Well, in this video, I'm gonna be sharing 15 truths that I barely hear people talk about that shifted literally everything for me. And if you're in a place where I was either at 22 or 23, or you're at that corporate job, or you're just stuck in life and you know that there has to be more to this, then this video is for you. And I don't believe that you're here by accident. And so I hope that you watch this until the end because I really put so much time into this to make sure that these things would really change your life. So the first thing that I had to learn was the principle of producing after your own kind. You see, when God set up the world, he said that everything produces after its own kind. And so whatever seed you plant, if you plant an apple seed, you're going to produce apple fruit. Now, what does that have to do with anything? It's because at first I made the mistake that so many people do. And I thought that I would not be able to do things like a rich person, to think like a rich person until I was rich. But what I learned was it was the exact opposite, that I had to have that type of mindset before I got there to even get there, that I had to already be thinking in terms of being proactive. I had to already be generous. I had to be an investor before I had excess income to invest because I realized that if I made excuses right now then I would only make excuses then and we know this because the Bible says what we do with little is the same thing that we're going to do with much right and so that's what we have to understand is that the mindset is not a matter of oh well of course you can think that way because you're rich I am rich because I thought that way and because I understood that everything that I believed was going to translate into everything that I saw around me and if you're in that place where you're saying I am believing I do have that mindset mindset, then it's only a matter of time before you start to see the fruit from it. The second thing that I learned is that purpose fuels perseverance. And this is something where a lot of people will quit. And it's because you don't have a deep enough understanding of why you even started. Because I knew that even at the best job that I was at, the job that people said I was crazy to quit, they gave me company paid health insurance and unlimited PTO and da 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 da. I knew that God had something else for me. And I knew that I wanted something else for me. And so I was so intentional about my purpose because I wanted to be able to be a wife and a mom who had time to be there with her kids and also to be able to be there with them financially and to be able to be there physically and to support them and be at all of the games and see their first steps and not have to miss moments and to be able to make sure that the college was paid for and that they never had to get debt or a loan for anything and that they weren't worrying about the same challenges that I had to growing up. And so when your purpose is deep and strong, it is something where you will open your eyes in the morning and you can't go back to sleep because of how much you know there needs to be done and you have this internal urgency that just tells you it has to be right now. And when you can tap into that and get out of the shallow motivations of just trips and cars and things like that, you will find Find that an entirely different beast comes out of you and says, oh my gosh, this is this is it. it. There's no other way. And that was something that when I was focused on the simple type of surface level things, I never understood why, even though I said I wanted these things, I really wasn't working for them. And it's because I wasn't uncomfortable enough yet. And so that was something that I had to understand and tap into that purpose instead of looking at the surface level motivation. This one, number three, is something I honestly had to learn the hard way, and that is success is a a habit and not a destination. I remember when I got to my first thing, it was like $50,000 a month and I had been uploading on TikTok really consistently. And once I got there, I just kind of stopped. Like <laughs> I just, it wasn't all at once, but it was just like slowly I was doing less and less because I had felt like I had arrived, like I was there. 
And and then of course, like at the same time, it didn't happen immediately because of the business model that I'm in. But eventually I started seeing that reflect in my income as well. And that's when I had to remind myself like, no, it's not just getting here, but getting here and staying here actually are two completely separate things. And that what it takes for you to get wealth is something different than what it takes for you to sustain wealth. And those are things that I had to learn. And so when you understand that and you focus on being that person instead of getting to that goal, then once you get there, it's just simply a reflection of who you were from the beginning. It's not a matter of something that you did. It's a matter of who you are. The fourth thing is that delayed gratification just isn't optional. There isn't a quick, easy way for you to do this with no skills or anything like that. And any people who do have overnight successes, it's because they had some sort of background skills in that area to begin with. So somebody may say, hey, I was able to get a hundred thousand subscribers on YouTube in one month, but I can almost guarantee you that they have experience as a speaker doing broadcasting at their school for the newspaper or for the, you know, morning news show, speaking at their church or other events, like that they have some sort of correlated background knowledge or soft skills that they have just transferred over. And so it's not that they didn't do the work, it's just that you didn't see the work. And so when you understand that, it kind of takes all of the, um, you know, quick money things that out of you. And it's not that making money quickly is inherently a bad thing. It's just that oftentimes when that is your focus and your goal, you will think in a short term mindset that removes the long term investment options from your table. And I don't think it needs to take forever. Again, I did it in literally under a year. But it's one of those things where if you go in expecting it to happen overnight and it doesn't, then you will be very discouraged versus if you use all the principles that should make it happen quickly, but you're still locked in for the long haul then you will be happy because you know that it's going to get there and whenever it does will be good number five is that failure is the tuition for success and failure is something that people who are very successful are not only familiar with but we embrace because we know that it's a natural part of the process and the journey and we're excited to fail because the faster you fail the faster you succeed and so when i realized that i started treating it like it was a game and like oh my gosh if i just keep failing then eventually i'm going to figure it out and the key though is it's not just to fail doing the same thing over and over, but to fail and then analyze why you failed and then to fix that. And you almost are like a scientist where you're testing these things out and you're trying them and you're experimenting to see what's going to work. And that's if you're doing it yourself. And if you want to go next level and you get a coach or a mentor or someone to actually teach you, then it's much less of an experiment because now you're doing with a recipe where you have somebody who told you exactly the amount to put in. And if it doesn't work, you still have that recipe to go back to and see where you messed up as opposed to just throwing random stuff in a pot and seeing if it turns out like a cake. Now, this lesson is one that was hard for me to grasp, honestly, and it's hard for a lot of people because it's just the opposite of everything that we've been told. And the truth is that you are paid for your value and not for your time. And this is confusing when we go to work and they pay us hourly or even salary for working a certain amount of time during the week, but they're not paying you for your time. They're paying you for the value and what they're valuing with dollar signs, your work to be worth, right? And so that is why there can be jobs where people work extremely hard. Like I would say waiters and waitresses work extremely hard, but they're not paid a lot of money because it is based on the value that the market has decided that their service is worth. And so once you detach those things and you understand, hey, if I can create value for people in a way that doesn't actively cause me to sacrifice my time, then I can free myself from that nine to five and from having to work on a clock for anyone. And that's what I was able to do with my business is to do it in a way where I realized if I was selling online products where I could just make it once and it could sell by itself forever, then I would free myself. And instead of me doing something like handmade goods where I have to make a ton or coaching one-on-one -on -one where I have to actually use my time or of course working a job, that if I have something, which there are a lot of things out there that can do that, then you are able to truly free yourself and to give people value in a way that doesn't cost you your time. Number seven is the law of reciprocity. You get what you give. And that's just true. The Bible says that, right? We reap what we sow. And so if you sow a little bit, you're going to reap a little bit. If you um, sow a lot, then you're going to reap a lot. And that is just how it works. And so when you're starting your wealth building journey with the focus being impact and not income, 
you will see that fold doubly because when people see how much value you're giving them for free, when people see how much value you're giving them up front, then they will feel even obligated at times to say, oh my gosh, you've given me so much. This money that I'm going to pay to work with you, this money that I'm going to pay to buy your product to enjoy your service is something that I'm enjoying doing. And people will literally give you money and then say thank you for it. Number eight is that money is a tool, but it's not a goal. And the second you understand that and stop thinking of just hitting this one number in your head, and more so think about the ways that you can impact others and how you can use money to do different things, then you're going to tap into a different mindset because money is simply going to amplify whatever you already are. So if you're a generous person, money is going to make you more generous. If you're a person who in your head is constantly flicking people off and telling people off and saying, oh, you know, telling your boss in your mind, oh, I could give you a piece of my mind. The second that you get that money, you're just going to become an even more cruel and rude and untrustworthy or whatever person. And so don't think about money as the end all be all because it's simply not, but it certainly can be a tool that is used to help bring a lot of good and a lot of things to the people in your own life and to the people around you. And this one I hit on on accident earlier, so I'll just say and we'll keep pushing, is getting rich and staying rich two different things, two different skills. And this is why you will also get content from like financial advisors and stuff like that, where they'll be talking to you about getting rich. But most of their advice is actually about just staying rich and about stability and not actually moving from a place of being in the lower or middle class to the upper class or the 1%, which is why I make the content that I make, having been someone who's been able to do that with my parents ever making more than $40,000 in a single year to me making well over $40,000 every single month. And it's because there are very few people who have been in that space who now turn take the time to teach others how to do it as well number 10 oh this one is gonna hurt but you cannot delegate accountability and a lot of people get coaches and advisors and all of this other stuff and thinking that if they just get enough people to check after them that that'll make them accountable and it won't that is something that truly is internal and you can play everybody if you want to you can give everyone excuses you can make up stories and you can make it make sense to everyone else but at the end of the day you'll always know You'll always know that you didn't work on your business, not because you were so busy or not because life was so hard, but because you didn't prioritize it. And the second that you can turn around and instead be proactive and acknowledge that your life may suck, but that it sucks because of the choices that you made and take full accountability, no matter what is or isn't your fault, taking accountability for all of it you will not be able to change your life until you have that moment. Number 11 is that your relationship with time directly correlates to your wealth. And you really have to get on top of three core things which are eliminating everything off your plate that does not make sense for what you're doing or where you're going, delegating, things that you do not need to do directly and automating. We're in the era of technology, y'all. There's no reason that we're doing manually so many of these things. One time is our most valuable resource because it is something that we can never get back. And when I learned how to do those three things, that's when everything really started to shift for me. Number 12 is to develop a bias for action. If you have to choose between being the person who never does anything and the person who always does something, Choose to be the person who always does something, even if that's going to result in you failing in some things, even if that results in you buying something and maybe it wasn't the best decision. My dad, something he didn't give me was money, but something he did give me was a good money mindset. And he always used to say, I've never lost money that didn't come back. Like, and that's just the truth. And so money is this unlimited resource. And so we have so many opportunities to be able to try different things, to invest in different things, to be able to work towards different things. And I'm, say, I'm not saying don't be a wise steward. I'm not saying get something just blindly and just waste all of your money. That's not what I'm saying. But I am saying that procrastination is the enemy of progress. And that inaction is costing you because you don't realize that you not making a choice is you making a choice. You not working on that business and you not taking that next step is you choosing to not prioritize the things that you're saying that you want. And when you really have a good relationship with understanding uh, your future self and thinking like, man, whatever I do now is going to affect me in the future. It's gonna affect my kids in the future. I thank 22 year old Danielle all the time. I thank the Lord first of all. But after that, I thank 22 year old Danielle for doing the work, for reading the books, for understanding things, for actually trying and taking action so that I could figure out what I did and didn't want in life at such a young age. And I think that's the reason why I am here, one of many, in terms of like the grace of God, in terms of 
why I was able to do it so young is because I failed more than most people do in their entire life in just the first few years of mine because I was so willing to try different things to stick my toes in all these different pots and I was very decisive I didn't wait 20 years in the corporate world before I said this is enough I had one year in the corporate world and that was all I needed to know I never wanted to do that certainly didn't want to do it for the next 40 years of my life so do not be scared of action. And I'm telling you that progress is so much better than that perfection. Number 13 is to plan with clarity. Plan with a crystal clear mind that says, this is exactly where we're going and this is how we're going to get there. And this is something that a lot of people misstep in because they think, oh my goodness, well, I just want to have freedom. They give themselves this vague image of what freedom looks like, but they don't actually think through if the things they're working toward will get them there. But I encourage you to sit down, make a dream budget, see exactly how much money you need to live the life that you want to live. You don't know how much it costs? Figure it out. Look at your dream house on Zillow. What are the bills that are going to be there? What are the expenses? We live in a day and age where there is chat GPT. You can tell chat GPT the exact size, the zip code, area of the house that you want to live in and ask it to estimate what the bills for that house are going to be. All right. This doesn't even have to be a thing that takes all day, but you need to get so specific with your vision. Then I want you to get a schedule, write down a schedule. What do you want your day to look like? If you realize that you, you only want to have to work one day a week, you only want to have to work one hour a day, then do not start a coaching business that requires you to take one-on-one -on -one clients and that the more clients that you get, the more work you have to do. Do not start a crochet company or a bread making company or a candle making company where you have to sit there and do that all day long. If you don't wanna be answering calls to manage employees, don't start a business that requires employees in order to scale. And these are mistakes that entrepreneurs come to me all the time after having made and they say, oh my gosh, I have this business now and I did the thing but I didn't get the life that I wanted. And so taking that time at the beginning to just spend a day clarifying your vision, knowing exactly what you want, what it's gonna take to get there, and then you reverse engineer, which means you start at the end and then figure out, okay, now what steps do I need to take to get there? Number 14 is that peace of mind is the ultimate luxury. And this is something that everybody's not gonna get. And this is something that is so personal to me. And it's the reason why we prioritize, like w the Lord was enabled us to get um, almost 200 acres this year. And we plan to have that paid off in cash very soon. And we have gotten advice from people who knew that we were doing this, who said, why would you spend that money to pay off that land when you could take that and you can invest it and you can leverage it and all this other stuff. And it is because the peace of mind of having a paid off property is more valuable to us than however much money we could get from putting that same money in investment. And so that is also kind of a side one as well as you have to know what's important to you and you have to be confident in your values because there are going to be so many people around you who are choosing to do different things. Things. And if you look to the left and right constantly, comparing yourself, comparing your vision, your business with things that other people are doing, it's going to be really easy to get led astray and get clouded and find yourself with your hands in all these different pots that you never even wanted to be in. And so understanding what makes peace of mind for you, understanding what your core values are is so essential to making sure that you stay on the right track. And lastly, is that money makes a good life better and an ungrateful life worse. And if you're content right now, if you are happy with your life right now, not that there's nothing you would change about it, not that there's no striving or working towards other things or no growth, but that you genuinely can say, I am satisfied with where the Lord has me in terms of I am thankful and I am appreciative and I'm going to work for more. But if the Lord never had anything more for me, I would be content. Whew, money's going to be a ball. Wealth is going to be a ball because you're going to get to just do more of that. You're going to get to be more content. You're going to get to be more grateful for the things that God has given you as you're already grateful for what he's given you. Now you're going to get to be more generous and give in such big life-changing ways to people around you, the people you've been praying to be able to bless on a higher level. And you're going to get to have more fun. And you're going to get to enjoy experiences that nobody else gets to do because you were able to put your head down and to do the work and to create wealth that the Lord has enabled you to create. And it's going to be amazing. And it's going to be so worth it. And I can't wait until you're able to retire your spouse, retire your parents, to pay for your kids' college funds, to buy your car in cash, to be debt-free, and to pay for somebody else to get out of debt too. I cannot wait to see what the Lord has for you. And so please, please, if you got to the end of this video, don't give up. Don't give up. 
it is so worth it. And I'm telling you being on the other side of it, that it is worth it. And all of that urgency that you're feeling right now, I need you to keep it. That desire you have right now to want to get up and run to your laptop and start working on your business or buy the course that you were thinking of. Or even if you were considering watching my free training where I explain everything that I do, you can look at that in the description too. But whatever action you need to take next, promise me you won't wait because life's not going to wait for you either. And the people you want to share that with, we do not know how long any of us have. And so don't take that lightly. Hopefully you learned something from this video and these are things that I learned. And if you still want to continue growing in this journey and you're building wealth, there are actually four enemies of wealth that you are fighting against potentially right now and that are certainly fighting against you. And so if you want to be made aware of what they are and what tactics those enemies use so that you can fight against them, then make sure you check out my next video, which is the four enemies of wealth. And I'll see you there.